sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mary. It's good to see you. Singer back there. <laughs> He's gonna be a singer when he comes back. Oh, man. 
I've often heard and read about that city where with Jesus we shall live forevermore. There's a mansion in construction for my dwelling, and the streets of gold will run by my front door. chapter 4. Appreciate this Father's Day. Appreciate each one of you that are here today worshiping the Lord on this special day for fathers. Proverbs chapter 4 begin with the first verse. Hear ye children and the instruction of a father and attend to knowing understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all of thy getting, get understanding. <clears throat> Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor, and thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, the steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is the life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word of instruction that is given unto us today. Father, I pray, pray that we would retain your words. And I pray that we would get wisdom and understanding. Lord, open our understanding and give us that which we stand in need of right here today. We commit these services to you and looking to for your anointing and uh, your will to be done here today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Tyler message this morning is like father, like sons and daughters. A lot of times children take on a lot of the traits of their parents. And parents, we need to uh, take on the traits that God has instructed us and pass them on to our children 
and he starts off there, hear ye children. Sometimes we have to uh, uh, speak up to our children and say, now listen, I want you to hear this and give them uh, special instructions. And I pray that children would listen to those instructions of the Lord and, and follow them and get understanding. In that verse five or four, he taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Children, keep his words, retain his words and live. Parents, we need to have those in our heart that we would instruct our children uh, the words of God. And get wisdom, he says in five, and understanding and forget it not. You know, we forget a lot of things as we get older, but this is one thing that we need to retain, and that is the Word of God. I believe that was Jack Day or uh, one of the preachers that was getting older told me one time, he said, uh, uh, that wasn't him, it was another uh, preacher, I remember now. Uh, but anyway, he said, I forget a lot of things, but when I step in the pulpit, I still remember God's word and I can use it and quote it. We need to retain God's word to guide us. And he says, get understanding and don't forget it. Neither decline from thy words of my mouth. Don't draw back from the uh, word of God. Uh, listen to it, hear it, and follow it. In verse 10, he says, my son, and receive my sayings, and thy years of life shall be many. You like a, a good long life? We need to get in the word of God. We need to hear what God has to say to us and return, retain it, receive his sayings. And then in 11, he said, I have taught thee in the ways of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. He will lead you right. Parents, we need to lead our children right. God will lead us right. As we follow him, we can lead them in the right paths. And let's follow the Lord. 13 says, uh, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is the life. We need instructions in the word of God, and we need to hang on to it. We need to hold on to it. It is our life. And so I didn't touch on all of them, but uh, fathers and mothers and children, fathers and mothers, let's, let's get the instructions ourselves from the Lord and let's pass it on to our children that they can pass it on to their children, the next generation coming up. And so give this instruction through the wisdom of God. And as the, our children have a tendency to take up some of the traits of you as parents, I hope that those are good traits, but sometimes they, the uh, children will take up these traits and they can use it for good. And some use those, tra those same traits almost uh, for that which is maybe not quite so good. So let's pass on the good traits and, and try to lead them in that path and in that direction. Uh, also, I uh, want to mention that the uh, stability, the uh, spiritual stability of the home uh, is just far too great a responsibility for the mother alone. Husbands, parents, uh, dads, we need to take on our responsibilities in the home and uh, uh, let the mother help, but you need to be a, a part of this spiritual stability. It's too big of a job. It's a big job of uh, training and teaching our children. Many parents, though, never uh, think about, never understand that these children is a gift from God. God has given you this 
precious gift of life to raise, to train, to uh, raise up in the ways of God. Let's give uh, them good instructions as we are raising up that child. And he gave us that child uh, to have and to hold. He gave us that child that we could uh, uh, also, you know, one day we have to let that child go whenever, uh, because it says that uh, they will get married and uh, they will cleave to their wife and their husband. And so, uh, but you and I, it's hard to let go sometimes, but we have to let them go. That doesn't mean you have to quit loving them, but we have to let them, uh, the instructions that we have given them all down through this life, you probably need to begin then to pray, did I give them enough? Did I lead them in the right way? And now uh, you can still help, but you have to turn the reins over to them for their life and let them live but you can still pray for them. You can still help them and you still love them. God gave us that child to love that child. Uh, you know, I don't know how you could not love a little baby, but uh, I guess people don't, uh, but I don't know how. He gave us that child that we could cherish, that we could enjoy it, we could rejoice with the successes that we see that little child have. I was just mentioning back here with this one little one, we have a, a great grandbaby and they send us pictures every once in a while of her and, and uh, the other day she was trying to turn over and she was just struggling and uh, she was just grunting, she was working hard and she made it, you know? Uh, we can rejoice and we were laughing right there and we're, uh, I mean, no, uh, 400, three, 400 mile, I suppose, apart. But we was getting to see that success that she had had. We get to rejoice with them. But you know also these children, sometimes they have some failures and we can mourn with them. But even in that mourning, you and I as parents, we need to be there to be a cheerleader for them and an encourager and Come on, you can do it. Get back in here and let's do it now. And uh, uh, be an encourager to them and let them know that that defeat or that uh, whatever it was that got them down a little bit isn't the end because there's hope and we just keep going. Fathers and mothers, we're teachers of these children. And... Uh, there's more to teach them than to just how to be successful in making money and uh, in uh, position in this life. I tell you, we need to be teaching them uh, the uh, how to be successful spiritually as well. And we need to, uh, I believe in teaching them how to manage money and be successful and so forth like that, but don't leave out the spiritual part. That's a calling from God to every parent is to train up that child in the ways of the Lord. He tells us to do that. Over in Deuteronomy, I want to turn over and read the passage there in chapter 6, Deuteronomy 6 and verse 5 uh, through 7 actually. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. That's the parent. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. This is supposed to be in your heart as parents. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto the ch thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. We need to be talking about the word of God to our children. We need to be teaching the word of God to them and telling them we are teachers. We teach them about successes of this life, but we are to be teaching them of the spiritual things of life as well. In Psalm 78 and verse five, it says, 
Uh, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known <coughs> to their children. We are to make the word of God known unto our children. Let them know what God's word has to say that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born who should arise and declare them to their children. See, we make it known to our children. They make it known to their children. We must let them know that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. That is so they will not forget. We need to make the word known to them that they would not forget to keep God's commandments and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast in God. We as parents have a responsibility to our children to teach them and then they are to be teaching their children. And so, you see, it doesn't just stop with our children. The results of you and I as to whether we teach them or whether we do not teach them. Let's teach them the Word of God. Over in the book of James, and if you was here Wednesday night, uh, it was uh, teaching about that uh, the way that we live our life reveals what kind of faith we have. The life that you and I as parents live before our children reveals to them right away. But yet we are to be speaking it as well besides just living it. Uh, what is, uh, do we uh, show them that reading and studying of God's word uh, is important? Uh, they, they catch on to this very fast. If you are spending time reading God's word, uh, studying it, or sharing it with them, they pretty quick catch up on this. That, well, that's pretty important. I need to listen to it. And that's what the uh, psalmist was saying earlier, that we are to retain those things. And just how important is these things in our home as we are home teachers uh, homeschooling, so to speak, our children. Uh, prayer. How important is prayer? Do we pray enough to where that it, they catch on to the fact that this is important uh, or they wouldn't be doing this every time we turn around? Uh, what about what fellowship with God's people? Is it important enough that it would be revealed? The life we live uh, will show, it will reveal our faith in God. Also, worship with God's people. Is it showing up to those children enough that it is evident to them? That's important. I need to be doing that as well. What about the witnessing to the lost? Uh, how important is it really to us, those things in life, the ways of God? To, uh, we need to be revealing it unto our children. We do it through uh, uh, our actions. We can do it also through uh, the, our words. So we need to be living it out before them and it will make a big impression uh, as to what is important in our life and what is not important in our life. Let's, let's make these spiritual things important in our lives. We are uh, uh, homeschooling. Uh, teachers is what we are and we need to uh, teach them commitment we need to teach them worship study prayer and teach them God's ways now I'm not a, a, a big advocate of homeschooling I think that there's some I've over the years I've seen at least two families that did super good jobs of homeschooling I've seen several families that did not do very good homeschooling. It wasn't because they uh, uh, maybe couldn't, but I don't know, they didn't do it. These two families though, I know the kids, so the children, and they went on and did very well. They 
uh, went on into public uh, uh, school eventually and did excellent in it, both of those families. But many families, they think that just, uh, uh, well, I'm going to teach them this about life and we go on field trips, but don't ignore the fact that I know this one individual that took them with him and he said, well, they need to learn about uh, being out here with us and, and this. They weren't really teaching them any uh, uh, curriculum of any type. Uh, I tell you, it's important that we teach them the Word of God and commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, and we need to talk about it and uh, reveal it and show them. Be a good homeschooler. We should teach them uh, at home even and teach them to retain uh, that as the word had said earlier. What is the biggest thing that is needed as parents? Well, love is the greatest need there is. Uh, we need to, uh, to teach them love and uh, there needs to be love in the home. Uh, we have to be there. There's many a uh, home that is a one parent type family and uh, you know, it's hard to love at long distance the way that you can right there. And so many times people take on extra jobs because they want more gadgets and so forth and they're not there. I can tell you that uh, a lot of times gadgets is not necessarily the best method. Uh, sometimes we have to uh, take on some extra work to uh, uh, pay the bills or something, but we uh, be careful about long term because mom needs help or dad needs help, whatever the situation is. Uh, loving our children is not always saying yes. Oh yeah, you can have this. Oh yes, you can have this. And just work an extra job to get it or whatever, you know, you can't always say yes. That's not necessarily love. Uh, does Jesus give you everything that you ask him for? Well, if he does, you need to get with me and talk to me because he don't give me everything that I've asked him for. Uh, sometimes he said, no, Jack, you don't need that probably. But uh, uh, he doesn't. And loving parents sometimes have to say no. That's No, that's not the best. You, that's not what you need. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, people might say, well, I, do, I get everything I ask for. I just don't ask him. What's wrong with you asking? You know, uh, that's your choice. Uh, but why should you go without the things that God has available to those who will ask? Ask and thou shalt receive, he says. And so many people do without because they won't ask. Do you know why? It's probably pride. Uh, oh, I just don't want to bother him. I just, but God isn't bothered by that. If you are his child, he loves you, and it's probably available in most cases. Ask, and we can receive. Uh, love our children includes a lot of things. Uh, talking about God's word, living it out before them, we need to live out our faith in the home, not just a church. Church is great, but live it out right there. Uh, be who you are, even at home. I'm a Christian, be a Christian at home, uh, you see. Uh, teach them to reverence God's worship and uh, worship him. Also be an example to the children in truthfulness in dealing with in business situations. Be truthful. I know an individual. Uh, we need to be honest. But I know an individual that his wife told me one time he, uh, he, he can't sell anything. And I said, well, how come? She said he's just too honest. He tells them everything that is wrong with it. He can't sell it. Be honest. You're better off without the sale than to not be honest on something like that. Just be honest uh, and live it out before the children. 
Also, in, uh, be a good example in attitude and effort. And our children will see it. They'll recognize it. Also, we need to, as parents, we having difficulty, we need to ask God for wisdom. God, give me the wisdom to teach this child that you have blessed me with and help me to teach that child the way you have me to teach that child. Uh, we need to provide a balance in raising of our children. Uh, there's discipline. If it's all discipline pretty quick, it's going to turn sour on you. But I think that it turns sour a lot of times whenever we think it's all love. Uh, if you had a, ch if we had a child right here, and we let out church, and that child started running out across the road right there, and a car was coming, oh, would you just please stop? You know, we probably wouldn't do that, would we? We would probably raise our voice. Love sometimes says uh, with a little bit more emphasis. On it now, I, I believe in love, but sometimes there has to be some emphasis. There needs to be affection. There needs to be fun, and there also needs to be some leisure. But we all need educated. We need to, and I'm not talking about this higher degree, but homeschooled in teaching of God's word and in church and and in Sunday school and. I remember when I first got in Sunday school, I didn't know anything about God's Word. But boy, I started studying. I wanted to learn. As more I learned, the more I wanted. And I just kept reading and reading, and I still need. But I can tell you that as parents, if you have a godly parent, we need to teach those children. Don't stand back, hold back, but teach them uh, God's Word. Proverbs 13, uh, he tells us, He that spareth the rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. In other words, betimes mean uh, early enough and promptly. Early enough. Well, whenever they get to be a certain age, I've heard people say, well, when they get to be a certain age, I'm going to spank them good. <laughs> well, you know, uh, teach them early. And you don't have to set a date back here. I'm going to try to work them over and, and get them in line. Also, promptly, you know, I, I never did like it about uh, mother saying, boy, you're going to get it when your dad gets home. If that child needs discipline, it probably needs it right now because when dad gets home, it forgets. I knew an individual that said, boy, I just hated to see my dad come home because I was in trouble earlier and he's going to give me a spanking. You know, just discipline them. It's not always about spanking, but I can tell you that you can usually find that which will work something and do it promptly. Uh, correct thy son and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give thee light unto thy soul. Correct them, teach them, discipline. Uh, I know some that was way too strict. I know people that was way too lenient. And so there needs to be a proper balance in all things in training up that child. I can tell you it'll bless you. Uh, there'll be a delight in all that. Love is not always yes, but it's not always to ignore it either. I've seen things that I've tried to ignore over the years. You know what happens? It wasn't right, and it, uh, it just grew. It got a little bigger and a little bigger. If you're not careful, ignoring that which is wrong just grows on you. So don't, many times, just take care of it. Correction, correct them with a Christian attitude, with love. Those children will get a hold of that pretty quick and realize what's happening. Probably the majority of us, when our children came along, there was this deep desire within our, in our own lives as parents, I want them to have it better than I had it. And if we're not careful, we will ignore some of the things that we really should be 
pushing forth. And a lot of times we will push church and, and God's word to the back burner. But God called us to train up this child in the ways of the Lord. And so let's, let's never forget that. It's not always more money is better or toys or whatever. But uh, I found way back there when my children were just little types of uh, how that the Lord will supply needs if we'll put him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these things shall be added unto you. God will even provide of the physical things if we'll put him first. Uh, those children get a hold of that as well. The best teacher that the, our children can have, and we can have the greatest Sunday school teachers they are, but the greatest teachers of all is a godly parents who love Jesus Christ sincerely and steadfastly and want to demonstrate their faith unto their children. Show them that which you have, and that is a great teacher then they will want to be in Sunday school. They'll want to be in church. They will want to be in God's word because they begin wanting more and more. Living out our faith, every one of us, uh, showing not only our children, but those around us, the faith that we have in God. They'll want it. Children also have a responsibility. Uh, Parents, we have a tremendous responsibility, but uh, you remember what I read over there in Ephesians? Children do too. Uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children, we also need to hear. You remember over there, I read earlier, hear. We need to hear what uh, God is saying. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. Follow the instructions of those godly parents. Proverbs 1, uh, 4 and 1 was where he was talking about the instructions and hearing and love for the, we need to, as fathers and mothers, we need to have love for our children. Children, we have uh, love for our fathers and mothers. That's almost automatic, isn't it? It should be just, uh, Normal, that, that is the normal thing. It's as normal as eating, I think. Uh, I, I kind of like to eat. And uh, uh, I got a box of uh, chocolates yesterday. And I asked, I said, do I have to wait until Father's Day to open this? No, you can go ahead. So I set it right there by my chair. And I was reading. And, and I reach over and grab one. And reach over and grab one. Finally, I said, I've got to get this thing out of reach. <laughs> you know? That's kind of the way love is. Love of father and mother is you're there with them. You should just love them and want them. It's as natural as eating, I think, as loving our children, loving our parents. So, <clears throat> singing about dad there uh, earlier and brought tears to my eyes because I remember that bedside uh, experience. But, uh, you know, our love and reverence of worship of our Lord Jesus Christ should be very similar to that love of our father and our mother or unto our children. It should be sincere. It should be steadfast, unmovable, and uh, nothing get in the way of loving and reverencing our Heavenly Father as Lord and Savior. I tell you, he wants that, he desires that, he is, wants each and every one of us as parents to lead our children in that same type of love. <clears throat> but why is it that so many is not doing this today? Loving our Heavenly Father, it almost appears they're not loving one another even. I tell you, love is the key. That is the greatest need that there is today, is love. But we are saved and satisfied, and we sit and we sour, and we just need to realize that 
God needs to move us and we ourselves is all that is stopping it because God wants us to love him openly with reverence and honor and respect and showing of our children and our children vice versa. We have, we say we have faith. Let's show our children that faith that we have. Let's show our church that we have faith. Let's show our worldly friends that we have faith in God. And let's live out a genuine faith in Jesus Christ in our everyday lives, exemplifying what genuine love of Christ really means and honoring him wherever it is, raising him up and teaching of our children. I tell you, they'll watch you. I can guarantee you they'll watch it. And many times they'll do it just almost like you. Be careful because they're watching. And the Lord is watching. He knows. Let's open our faith in our heart and just let it uh, come out in the way that God would have us to. Jackie, let's have a verse of invitation. If you're not showing that faith in the way that God would have you to, the altar is open and he can help each one of us. Let us stand. Heavenly Father, we come before you to close of another service, thanking you for your love for all of us. You do love us. I know that you do. And Lord, we many times we say we love you. And God, I'm just asking you to help each and every one of us to show that love to our children, our families, our friends, our neighbors, the lost world, that we love you. Lord, because we know that you want us to be that type of a witness for you. We ask that in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Sister Jack.